Hello and welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another reaction video, reacting to something a little different here. Uh, not a new thing by any stretch of the imagination. It came out in 2016. Uh, Channel Zero, season one, Cam Co specifically. I love Channel Zero. I'm a big fan of it. We're in spooky month. I've just got done watching a weird show with creepy puppets and don't hug me, I'm scared. And that got me in the mood for another weird show with creepy puppets in Channel Zero, Candle Cove. If you haven't seen it, you should. You should see all seasons of Channel Zero. I think it's good. All four of them before it got cancelled, sadly. Uh, but still, I enjoy it. And I think Candle Cove is my favourite. And, you know, creepy puppets, tis the season, apparently. So, yeah, without further ado, let's just jump into it, I say, and let's jump into episode one of season one of Channel Zero, Candle Cove. Episode one, yeah, let's go visit Candle Cove. Uh, you lost a twin brother when you were 12? It's all very eerie, isn't it? <laughs> the question about the dead brother from how many many years ago, relevant, I suppose, to the book. The pesky bee, the fly <laughs> in the water. And the most ominous thing is just the background, you know? Maybe I'm just so used to these chat shows these days, like Jilly Fallon and James Corden and all of that. Like the bright colours, or jet audience there, but just a black void background is just so ominous. In 1988, five kids went missing. The Iron Hill murders. The one they never found was my brother Eddie. Losing a twin is like having a phantom limb. Yeah, you know, losing a sibling. Any family member is hard, but losing a twin, losing someone who looks exactly like you. That crazy. That must be crazy. Yeah, born at the same time, you live your whole lives together, losing them. Ugh. Ugh. I've never been back to Iron Hill. I want to do something unusual. I have someone on the phone, 12 years old. His family's gone through a tragedy as well. I'd like you to talk to him. Unusual's a, a, a word for it, isn't it? Is that okay? I know he's a, a licensed psychologist or whatever, but just bringing on a random 12 year old who's also, you say similar things, so let's say, who also had a twin brother die. Uh, for him to, to psychoanalyze on stage, I, I don't know if that's like, like, that doesn't sound it like it would be allowed or okay. It's like at least the thing you should give warning for. I don't know if that's okay. Are you there? Speed run it before he tries to stop it. I'm a doctor who kids like you talk to. Anything you want to talk to me about? The long, eerie silence. No one's saying anything. Just him sitting there very uncomfortably. And then the laughing. That childlike music in the background. It's... Oh. Mike, why are you scared to come home? Oh, God. Why are you scared to come home, Mike? <laughs> you know, if that happened, I'd probably be scared to go home as well. So fair enough, Mike. Fair enough, actually. Dead fly in the water now, just the host just blankly staring at you. The crew members are mannequins, it's a dream, yeah, but the crew members are mannequins. Jesus. <laughs> just in the void here, yeah, God. Mike, it, it, Mike really is haunted by all this, isn't he? <laughs> Jesus, he is haunted by this. Mike? Why are you scared to come up? Based on all of that, I'm going to go with fair enough for being scared to go home, Mike. <laughs> if those are the goddamn nightmares you're having every night, then you know what, you know, with, with all that, and then the fire demon thing as well, you know what, Mike, fair enough for not wanting to go home. Fair enough, mate. It's just the, the loneliness and the silence of it all, isn't it? God. Him waking up alone, you know, having texting his wife good morning, sending on the same person, same person, leaving the house, driving on his own across these desolate, lonely highways and stretches of nothingness. But there are so many in America; it's such a large place. You know, just remembering his brother. It's just, it just seems all very lonely for Mike, doesn't it? Jeez, damn. Um, 
watched and now in flashbacks hit him the second he gets there. American goldfinch. Now he's just part of the yard. Hey. I wanted to surprise you. If you're gonna <laughs> if you're gonna show up home for the first time in God knows how long. That doesn't feel like the type of it feels like a phone call at least, right? <laughs> Are we gonna show up to your mum after God knows how many years? At least maybe like a text. <laughs> You know, what sort of dead bird, you know? Maybe you can make some symbolism between the dead bird and Mike coming home. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe I'm reading too much into everything. He is a lurker, this cat. I swear, he kills for sport. So you're a vegetarian then? I, I don't eat songbirds. Everyone's got to draw, in, draw, draw the line somewhere, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, if you can draw it songbirds, fair enough, you know. They're lovely songs, fair enough. What? No pictures of me or Eddie. Well, don't take it personally. It's just a matter of managing intrusive thoughts. That's fair enough, Miss Marla. That's fair enough, you know? <laughs> Mike, you handled your intrusive thoughts by, you know, leaving home and not coming back for many, many, many years. And she did it by not putting photos on the wall. I, you know, everyone's got their methods. Why have you come? Just tell me. I'm so happy to see you. You are welcome here. It's just... I hope you haven't come to rip open a wound. That's fair enough as well. <laughs> You've been gone for God knows how many years. And then you finally show back up again. It's fair enough to ask why. You know? That's that, that's fair enough from Miss Marla again. Fair enough. Once every two years, if someone turns up to solve those murders, I've always been afraid one day it would be you. We can't gloss over the uh, cutting footage of Mike over there cutting his arm with the knife. <laughs> We can't really just jump over that, you know? <laughs> it's not a small thing. Oh, God. What sort of murders? You know, plural. Plur the interviewer mentioned plural as well, actually. <laughs> oh, I feel like it was always bound to be Mike. It always, you should probably expect that as well, you know? You never wanted it to, but you always knew, didn't you? Wow. Mike Painter. I was hoping we could have a quick word. So Billy Reese was on first, and you don't remember. No, 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 I, I, I remember. Not only does Mike not remember, he does not give a shit. <laughs> not only does he not remember, he does not care. Gary, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, you're trying to reminisce, but he's not here for that, Gary. Gary, I was hoping I could take a look at those files. Do you mind if I ask why? Way to kill the mood, Mike. Way to kill the mood, Mike. Gary was just trying to reminisce. You know, like... How about them files, though, hmm? <laughs> Killed the mood, mate. I mean, it's been uh, 28 years since they dragged those kids out of the woods. <sighs> this, this, this show, man. <laughs> Just having a conversation over lunch, and then it cuts to a guy cutting his arm. Having another conversation, cuts to dead kids hanging in a tree. It's, oh, my gosh. <laughs> this show... <laughs> Look, Mike, all, all I'm saying is that uh, a lot of folks, just like you and your mom, lost people. I'm not saying no. I guess I'm just saying why now. That's a fair enough question from Gary. You know, like the mum said, you know, I don't want to rip any off any old, old band-aids or whatever she, she said. You know, you just show up asking for files, wanting to look into things. I think it's fair enough to ask the question, you know, why now, Mike? Why? I'm writing a book. Really? Is it going to be a good book? I hope so. What I mean is, is it going to be a respectful book? Above all else. Another fair question from Sheriff Gary. <laughs> you know, dealing with murders. It's a goddamn Dharma series in the, at the minute, isn't it? Which the families didn't give permission for. So you can say that wasn't respectful. So it's a fair enough question from Gary saying, is it going to be respectful? That's fair enough. That's fair enough from Gary. Did you know that I married Jessica? She would be right annoyed if I didn't invite you for dinner tonight. No, 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 no. no. And I think I can help you. I need your expert opinion on my kid. I keep saying it, but another fair enough, Gary. Because that works on two levels, doesn't it? You get him to dinner, uh, and you get a little something out of him, checking out your kid or whatever, because he's growing up strange, whatever that means. Um, also, you know, maybe get a few beers in here. Maybe, you know, Lolly's guard down a bit. And maybe... Get some more genuine answers for why now and all that. Smart. Surprisingly sure. Well, he is a sheriff, actually. So smart from Sheriff Gary. Well done. Well done. 
When I'm sheriff, the first thing I do is take down that stupid painting in your office. I like the painting of the dogs playing poker. He's been watching TV forever. I won't watch Labyrinth. Tough life, bud. Dane, tell your sister it's time for bed. I mentioned this earlier. That kid is obsessed with David Bowie. Oh, Sheriff Gary. God. <laughs> so first of all, the son to talk about the TV. And the, 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 the Gary over here just hanging on my mouth. Tough for you, mate. <laughs> oh. And his his son growing up weird was code for his son likes watching Labyrinth and he likes David Bowie. So that feels like code for Sheriff Gary Ogre is weird that he's gonna be that he's gay. <laughs> Which oh Gary. Oh Sheriff Gary. <laughs> come on, mate. You you're better than this. Maybe you're not, but you come on. That's strange, right? I wouldn't worry about it. I mean, we were pretty strange, remember? We had our own imaginary kingdom. Yeah. And you were the kings? Sheriff Gary over there, not too happy looking with uh, Mike and his wife reminiscing. You invited him, mate. You invited him, mate. Mike's the expert. Only ask him. What do you think? Too much TV bad for kids? Of course it is. Where's the bathroom? Down the stairs, just to the left. Why, didn't I, why does none of the guys here like Mike? Like, come on. Is it because he's just so good with the ladies? Probably. Probably just so suave. Always the puppets, isn't it? It's always the goddamn puppets. <laughs> oh, it's just so creepy. And then, of course, cutting off just as Mike's walking past as well, so he doesn't see it. <laughs> oh, puppets. But you know, one of these days, I'll just watch the Muppets and make myself feel happy about puppets. <laughs> Today's not one of those days, but someday. Why are we being quiet? It went away. Katie, what were you watching? Right out in the middle of the Don't think you want to know, Mike. Don't, don't think you want to know. Nice, and she goes, how to get there. <laughs> I did. You guys remember Candle Cove? I'm not saying this is, the same this is here in your heart, Mike. But I'm going to assume Katie said, answered your question while you're watching with Candle Cove, and then you immediately went upstairs, a bit disoriented, chugged a beer, and then interrupted the conversation to bring it up. <laughs> so, you know, this is, yeah, it's probably, probably hitting you still. And for like a couple of months. Two months, September, October, 88. Katie told me she just saw it. <laughs> Mike chugged his entire beer in like a minute. Now he's moved on to the wine. <laughs> oh my God. Get out of guy really get into him, huh? I used to have this really weird recurring dream. They would just be screaming. Oh, that was an episode. No, not possible. It was a nightmare I had. I mean, him, see, him remembering it too probably means it was an episode, <laughs> and it's a weird show, so fair. But I, you know, understandable for Julie. I want to say that going no, even the creepy kid show wouldn't make an episode of them just screaming, would they? Remember Jawbone? He'd say, "When I catch you, I'm gonna skin your." <laughs> Thanks for dinner. You guys keep walking down memory lane. You brought it up. <laughs> fair enough. <for> that. <laughs> you brought it up. He did. He did bring it up. But you know. Judging by all the alcohol he consumed since he brought it up, clearly, yeah, probably best you go home, Mike. <laughs> probably best you go home. Eddie, he's just gonna do it again! <laughs> Pay the toll. Shove it up your ass. Uh, I was gonna say a brave move from Eddie, but my meaning for a stupid move from Eddie. Who walks up to the gang of kids with a barking dog and tells them to shove it up their ass. Doesn't feel like a smart move, Eddie. I can see why Mike was trying to stop him. I'd rather have no dad than one that years. Gary! Get oh. over here and get us on! Oh. Do it! Oh. Do it. Oh. God's sake, Gary. <laughs> you come with Mike and Eddie. And then Bully... I can't remember what... I don't think they said his name, but Bully guy there. <laughs> he's, he's, straight, he's straight up, you know. Go over and you're there. Like, come on. Come on, Gary. <laughs> Oh, I didn't like the sound of that. Oh my god. Kids. <laughs> I can't, I don't think you can say kids after he breaks someone's finger. <laughs> oh my god. Stupid move, Eddie. Jesus Christ. <laughs> and Gary coming back with us like nothing happened. <laughs> oh. Don't tell 
And there you go. <laughs> you can make, you can kind of make the links, can't you? Mike and Eddie here feeling sad, scared, vulnerable, alone, and then Candle Cove shows up. You know. So yeah, you have to kind of ask how well, Sheriff Greg's daughter Katie's feeling at the minute. <laughs> but yeah, then Candle Cove shows up. <laughs> Something is coming. A strange vessel headed for the cold. Welcome to Candle Cold. The skeleton appearing on screen whilst you know, unrelated to it is very hypnotizing. I feel like I've seen like videos of that like flash things on screen. Uh, to, like a hypnotizing technique. And it's it's that with a giant scary weird skeleton of it. <laughs> I don't like the static. <laughs> Mike. I don't like it. You're a braver man than me, Mike, to reach out to touch it. <laughs> Jesus. Oh my god. Woken up by the middle of the night. In the middle of the night by static. And then you turn around and you hear goddamn dead twins voice. You see that. It's just uh... Doesn't sound like a, like a fun time, does it? <laughs> I've been having nightmares. So that's why you came back. Well, I hope it helps you sleep. Not so far, but, you know, positive thinking, Miss Marla. <laughs> positive thinking. What? There's someone in the woods. People walk in the woods. Someone standing... It's not even in the woods. It's on the edge of the woods, staring at your house, only turning around when both of you look towards them at the window. <laughs> You know, interrupting Miss Marla's breakfast of toast and blueberries. Never seen that combination, but fair enough, Miss Marla. But, yeah, you, we wouldn't want it. You wouldn't want it. I could never live near a woods. Or like, yeah, out in like a woodland area like that alone. It's just, no. No thank you. Love the May May Kate on the wall. Love it. I can has mouse. God, this is early 2000s. Hi, honey. Katie? Katie's gone, you know, she sees Candle Cove and then she's gone. Oh, God. She's sleepwalking too now, I guess. Candle Cove just does that, she has that effect on people, gets the sleepwalking going. The women have walked in the woods. Ominous statements of walking to the cafe and say over breakfast. Past participle. In. Present perfect tense. Indicating something Mastered that started in the past, past but continues, continues until, until now. now. First of all, English teachers, Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, and secondly, obviously, a statement that's effective now. Started in the past, the Candle Cove stuff continues now. The Candle Cove stuff continuing. You know, obviously, and you know, you could say it's a throwaway statement, obviously, it's not, but English teachers overall. <laughs> Mike? It feels like a weird area to start the search in. But like we're not going to go on the, in the woods, we're going to go on the edge in this weird little area of, like, pine fir trees. <laughs> like, there's so much woods to cover, and we're just going to start here. You know. In an area that doesn't look too big, that feels like we could cover it by just shouting, Katie. <laughs> Come on, let's go another way. Don't! What happened to your hand? Daddy kiss it for you? A All doctor, right. probably. A doctor. What, Eddie? You want something? What the hell's wrong with you? Come on, Tim. Eddie doesn't look afraid, and then the 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 bully just walks away. You know, fear. It's like it's got like scarecrow. <laughs> no fear. Well, I'm off then. Something's up with that kid. The dog no longer barking at him. And he just lets it go away. You know, kind of rude, but you know, kid was an ass to you, so fair enough, Eddie, I guess, maybe. <laughs> uh, showing that, you know, the dog's still its old self, aggressive by nature. I mean, like I was being raised by. <laughs> but he gets brought to a heed by. Eddie didn't even shout for him or anything, Eddie just stood 
out the way. The doggy didn't even look over at him for a minute. Just the presence of the true alpha now, Eddie. <laughs> Stop the dog. So, that show, did you bring it up or did Katie bring it up? She did. Why? Us. Uh, weird they just aired again. It's a fair enough question. You know, Mike shows up. He speaks with Katie in private for like a minute. And then comes back and says that she happened to mention this show that no one's seen or heard about in 20-odd years since they were kids. And that's fair enough. And then she goes missing. It is, it's a fair enough question to ask Mike. You have to admit it's fair enough. <laughs> it's a bit suspicious, mate. I need to talk to you. Marla told us that she heard you come in at 3 a.m. last night, five hours after you left her house. I walked around. What are you not telling me? You know, it all does. <laughs> The Candle Cove, leaving, not getting home till 3am, just walking around for five hours, Katie's missing. It does all add up, Mike. You seem awful suspicious right now. This will sound irrational. Say it. That show may have something to do with this. No, it not. Candle Cove. And then your first line of defense is, hear me out, what if, right? What if Candle Cove did it? <laughs> it, it, you know... You know how crazy, you must hear how crazy you sound, Mike. Like, come on. In 88, the only time the show ever aired was during the murders. When the show stopped, the murders stopped. I know how it sounds, but I'm not crazy. You sound it, you know, like, you know what else seemingly left in 88 and then only just came back? You. <laughs> Which, you know, obviously demonstrates the connection between Mike and the show, but to them, just sounds awfully suspicious, doesn't it? <laughs> It did something to my brother. You were released from a psych ward three days ago. He must have come straight here. No, I went home the first night. Oh, no, no, that's okay. That makes everything better, Mike. <laughs> everything we've already mentioned, add in the fact that you left a psych ward three days ago. You know? <laughs> Honestly, Mike, I'm surprised they haven't arrested you for the kidnapping already. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm suspicious of him, and I know he didn't do it. <laughs> oh, but I love saying, no, 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 I didn't come straight here. I went home first for a day. <laughs> oh, Mike, you funny man. You funny man. They said you had a psychotic episode. It's connected to that show. Gary! Mike! In Mike's defense. <laughs> You did just call your sheriff husband over. Fair enough to Mike, for Mike saying, you know what? I feel like she's a, she's about to get him to arrest me or something. So I'm just going to pop off. That's fair. Oh, that's fair enough. Jess, do you have her? No. Babe, babe what's wrong? It's Mike. I think you know something. Yes. Okay, we'll find him. Spread out. Hit the tree line. Finally hitting that tree line. I feel like we should have been there already, but, you know, I have to start somewhere, I guess, Sheriff Gary. <laughs> Okay, everything else going on, Mike? You just going to see their son without them? Doesn't seem like a good idea right now. She said you'd come talk to me. Did she tell you where she was going? What's the crow's nest? Okay, obviously... Okay, you can ask the question, why didn't the parents just ask the kid? I assume they did, and she told him to only tell Mike, because the show told her to only tell Mike, so Mike would find her. But... Yeah, Mike, it's still not the best idea from you. It's obviously it's going to work. It's worked here, but <laughs> going to see their son without their permission after everything else going on. Where's Dad's gun? What do you want a 30 year old gun for? Just in case. Okay, so they think you kidnapped their daughter, then you went to visit their son without them, uh, and then you went home to grab a gun. Now, Mike. <laughs> You see how this all looks, right? You see it? It's not just me. You see this too? <laughs> it's not looking good, mate. They didn't understand in 1988, and they don't understand now. Where are you going? There. Don't I'll just walk into the woods wearing, holding a knife, Mike. Don't just walk into the woods holding a knife. It's a bloody skeleton. It's a bloody skeleton. Okay, that's clearly just someone in a costume. Okay, most likely a kid because of the height. That's clearly just a kid in a costume. <laughs> Rather than your nightmares of being an actual skeleton. Oh, but still the grab. Oh. 
and then chasing them with a knife through the woods. Oh god, Mike, you're having a great day. You're having a great day. Oh, it's not a good image. You know, if anyone here was curious why how the kids got into the the tree branches, there you go. As Mike looks down from the cliff at the tree they were all hanging from. If anyone was was curious about the physics of that. You're welcome. Who's back there? Mike. He found her, so thank God for that. You know, she was just chilling, sitting, sitting, chilling, you know. <laughs> uh, and, you know, thankfully he ditched the knife in the seconds before he came around the corner. Not to scare her too much, you know. The situation does not increase by Mike coming around the corner, knife in hand. Are you okay? It's not a nice sound. They would hear something, look, and then Mike says, you know what, let's just get out of here, shall we? And also, that's, Mike, that's not going to be good for you, is it? <laughs> you know, I really don't like the tooth monster here. But, you know, after all that, all that suspicion, you disappear, you go off, you bring her home. Yeah, you go, Mike. I mean, you could say that brings the suspicion on the fact that you brought her home. So, you know, you knew where she was, they could say. But then you bring her back without a couple of teeth as well. <laughs> you see how this all looks, Mike? <laughs> I'm shocked episodes two through six aren't you in prison. She says the TV told her where to go. How'd you know to find her up by the signal tower? I just needed a place to think. And you just happened to find Katie there. It is fair enough suspicion, you know. She says, oh, the TV told me where to go. Mike coincidentally went there, you know, based on where him and Eddie used to you go. Yeah, it's... I've spent a lot of this episode just talking about how suspicious Mike is, because Jesus Christ does he look suspicious here. <laughs> I brought your daughter back, man. Yeah, minus a couple teeth. Fair enough as well. You all a lot of people, a lot of parents in shows like this get very, get very, you know, you find them very over, going with you know, you brought it back. That's all that matters. They get overwhelmed with happiness with that and they ignore the rest. Sheriff Ed, Sheriff Gary here is like fair enough. You brought her back. She was missing a few teeth, <laughs> which fair enough. Fair enough. So Mike realizing that for whatever reason, that guy, the one from the, the from the dinner who you know, we works here, you know, a police officer or whatever, was the one standing on the edge woods staring at him in the house. Strange, very strange. Mike, America's child psychologist saves little girl. Is that it? Katie's gonna be okay. Just that's actually a reasonable consideration there from her. You know, trying to figure out what your angle is. You know. That's a pretty decent angle, isn't it? America's child psychologist. Forget about the psych ward stuff. He just saved a little girl. That's actually pretty smart reasoning for trying to... If you're trying to figure out why... If you think Mike didn't try to figure out why, that's pretty good. That's pretty good reasoning. Spare me, okay? Just put it in your book. There is no book. Then what are you doing here? It's been calling me. That's a hell of a call to get, Mike. <laughs> it got in your head and made you carve into your arm, Mike come home that's a that's a hell of a call you know <laughs> fair enough fair enough <laughs> jesus christ you don't have to leave i do out of sight out of mind do you remember candle co of course after i left did you ever see it again what fair question <laughs> <laughs> you just wanted to cover the basis from Mike as he prepares to leave. <laughs> you know, he's stuck in his head so much, trying to get some clarification. Who made it up? Made what up? I'm talking about this, the show we watched. Oh, no. The show I'm talking about wasn't real. You used to sit watching the static. And then the big reveal at the end of the first episode. Mike preparing to leave, trying to put it all behind him. It's like a bad experience. But then his mum, Miss Marla, pointing out that Candle Cove never existed at all but obviously something's at play because it wasn't just mike and eddie just going between themselves you had like julie gary saw it all that they, other people saw it so obviously it's not just this case or as well uh leaving mike to obviously think you know what i can't leave then with all this going on i can't leave it's bravery cave you have to go inside 
<laughs> Come inside. Puppet man. Oh. God, a clear message from the puppets, you know, telling all these kids now watching on their lovely high-definition TVs the quality's really improved on it. Um, you know, to come to them. To say the kids might be scared, but to be brave and come to wherever the creepy puppet show that doesn't really exist wants them to go. Uh. The ominous laughter from one puppet. As it go, camera goes into the cave, and then you just, it's just jaw bones, just jaw boning. <laughs> oh, bloody jaw bones, bloody jaw bones. I couldn't sleep with that door open. Maybe it's just me. I couldn't, especially in a hotel like that. I couldn't. Mike, where are you going? We're just getting started again. Oh my god, a good end to episode one. Gee, they go through a lot, don't they? Mike comes back, Katie has, has the dinner, Katie goes missing, looking for Katie, the suspicion, runs away, finds Katie, brings her back, more suspicion, goes to leave, finds out Candle Cove wasn't real, and then decides to stay. You know, getting the phone call, going very modern now, an actual phone call instead of forcing him to write out on his arm this time. Until the end, they can't leave. And so he won't. Uh, but that is it, and so when I, I have to leave. I hope you've enjoyed, though, uh, Candle Cove and Channel Zero in general. If you haven't seen it, once again, check it out. It's really good. I'll probably react to the rest of the episodes. I don't know when, because a lot of it's October, so it's spooky month. I've got my decorations out. We've got, uh, I'll try and point, skeleton guy here. If you've got any name suggestions, in the comments below. Uh, so, yeah, a lot of horror stuff coming out that I want to react to, and so I will. Uh, and so I will be back, though. For channel zero at some point either way though i hope you have enjoyed if you have leave a like and subscribe for more uh, let me know your thoughts on channel zero and candle cove in the comments below and any stuff you'd like me to react to coming out soon or already out uh, and as always i just want to say a very special thank you for watching